Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Anna Sindrang, Assistant Professor in the Zoology Department, Dalit Ram College, University of Delhi. Today I will be talking on the module Classification of Hormones. After going through this module, I hope I will be able to give you a brief idea about what are hormones, the basis of their classification and the various types of hormones. To begin with the introduction, Hormones are chemical substances produced by the endocrine glands of the endocrine signaling system. They are released into the circulation to reach their target site or cell and help in coordinating the activities of the trillions of cells in the body of a multicellular animal. The hormones reach out to all the cells of the animal's body, but only the ones with the receptors for the specific hormone respond. The scientific study of the hormone producing endocrine glands and cells is called endocrinology. The study of endocrinology began in 1849 when A. A. Barthold reported his classic experiment with castrated cockerels that showed loss of many of the male characteristics. But when one testis was replaced into the abdominal cavity, the male characteristics were retained. He speculated that testes secreted something that acted on the cockerel to produce male characteristics. This laid the foundation for endowing that endocrine tissues are structurally and chemically diverse and some contain more than one kind of secretory cell, each secreting a different hormone. William Bellis and Ernest H. Starling described the first hormone to be discovered. It was secreting a substance liberated from the mucosa of small intestine which stimulates increased secretion of digestive juices from the pancreas. In 1905, Starling coined the term hormone from the Greek word omao for excite or stir up. Some unique properties of hormones are they are synthesized by specific tissues or glands and are released directly into the bloodstream, which in turn carries them to their site or site of action. They affect and alter the activities of target tissues or organs. Ablation or removal of the endocrine tissue should produce deficiency symptoms in the subject. Replacement or reimplantation of the ablated or removed tissue elsewhere in the body should prevent or replace the deficiency symptoms. The deficiency symptoms should be relieved when the suspected hormone is injected. A single hormone might have one to many target cells with different responses or a cell might have one to many hormones regulating their function. Here is a diagrammatic representation of one hormone with different target cells producing different cellular responses. Before I move on to the classification of hormones, let me briefly talk about the endocrine signaling system. Endocrine signaling system. Our body contains trillions of cells which are constantly undergoing some activity or the other and that very little usually goes wrong with it is a biological marvel. I also emphasize, I'm sorry, it also, it also emphasizes the fact that our body is a marvelous machine which maintains relatively stable internal conditions or homeostasis even though the outside world changes continuously. This would not have been possible without a communicating system without, between the trillions of cells in the body. Hence, it is not surprising to say that the body has a complex communicating system governing and coordinating the basic cellular activities and functions. The endocrine signaling system is a part of this complex communicating system. The endocrine signaling system refers to the system comprising of endocrine glands and their secretion, the hormones and their function. Endocrine glands are ductless glands 
releasing their secretion directly into the surrounding tissue fluid and therefore they typically have a rich vascular and lymphatic drainage to receive the hormones. Because most hormones are required in very small amounts, circulating levels are typically low. The endocrine glands are present in mammals, birds, fishes as well as many invertebrates. The major endocrine glands of the vertebrates as shown in the diagram includes the pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, adrenal, pineal and thymus glands. In addition, several organs and tissues which are not exclusively classified as endocrine glands but contains discrete areas of endocrine tissue such as pancreas, gonads and hypothalamus are also present. Besides these major endocrine organs, several other tissues and organs whose chief function is not endocrine bear pockets of hormone producing cells such as the walls of the intestine, the stomach, the kidneys, the heart, the placenta, etc. Endocrine signaling is cell signaling within the endocrine system and the endocrine glands are the principal organs to endocrine signaling. The glands release appropriate hormones on receiving signals. For example, the hypothalamus releases a signal, a releasing hormone, on receiving a stimulus. The signal from the hypothalamus further stimulates the pituitary gland to release a signal, a hormone, that will travel through the blood or body fluids and reach the target site to elicit the necessary action. Now moving on to the classification of hormones, the hormones can be classified on several bases. The various types of hormones based on different parameters are as follows. Types of hormones on the basis of the distance between the site of synthesis to the target site or the target cell. Types of hormones on the basis of their chemical nature. Types of hormones on the basis of their solubility in aqueous medium. Trophic hormones, tropic hormones and non-tropic hormones. First, let's have a look at the types of hormones on the basis of the distance between the site of synthesis to target site or the target cell. On the basis of the distance between the site of synthesis and site of action, the hormones may be broadly divided into three types. Endocrine hormones, paracrine hormones, autocrine hormones. Endocrine hormones. Endocrine hormones taken from the Greek word endo which means inside or within, krines which means secrete. Endocrine hormones act upon cells that are distantly located from their production site as shown in the diagram. They elicit slow but long lasting response. They are synthesized by endocrine cells and released into the bloodstream to reach their target cell. For example, the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone produced from gonadotroph endocrine cells of the, endo of the anterior pituitary lobe reaches the distantly located target organ, ovary and testis via the bloodstream as shown in the diagram. Pancrea um, pedocrine hormones. Pedocrine hormones taken from the Greek word para which means adjacent, crinis which means secrete, Pedocrine hormones are lo local hormones secreted by one type of cell and act on another type of cell that are adjacent to their site of synthesis. They are released into the extracellular fluid, eliciting a quick response that lasts for short duration. For example, somatostatin hormone produced from delta cells of the pancreatic islets act locally on adjacent alpha and beta endocrine cells to decrease their production of glucagon and insulin respectively. 
Now autocrine hormones. Autocrine hormones taken from the Greek word autos which means self, krines which means secrete. Autocrine hormones are hormones that act on the cells that produce them or on the same type of cells. For example, the autocrine hormone, insulin-like growth factor 1 hormone produced by target cells such as fibroblasts, chondrocytes, osteoblasts, etc. rebinds to secreting target cell in an autocrine manner where it promotes cell growth. Here is a diagrammatic representation of the synthesis and action of insulin-like growth factor 1 hormones. Growth hormone produced in the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland reaches to all parts of the body through the bloodstream and binds to cells with growth hormone receptors. In the given diagram, the growth hormone binds to growth hormone receptors in the liver cells and stimulates the production of insulin-like growth factor 1 hormone. Insulin-like growth factor 1 hormone promotes systemic body growth and growth effects on nearly every cell of the body, particularly the bone, nerves, cartilage, skeletal muscle, skin, hematopoietic cell, kidney, liver, lungs, etc. The insulin-like growth factor 1 hormone, though predominantly produced by the liver cells, are also produced by the target cells in an autocrine or paracrine manner as shown in the diagram. Now moving on to the types of hormones on the basis of their chemical nature. On the basis of the chemical nature, the types of hormones are peptide or protein hormones, amino acid hormones, fatty acid hormones, steroid hormones. Peptide or protein hormones. The peptide or protein hormones are hormones made up of chain of amino acids ranging from three to hundreds of amino acids. They are hydrophilic that is water soluble and can easily circulate without binding to other proteins. However, they do bind to carrier proteins to protect them themselves from proteus enzymes in the plasma. They generally have a short term half life lasting for few minutes. They have their receptors on the surface of the target cells due to their inability to cross the lipid bilayered cell membrane because of their hydrophilic nature. They are generally produced as large polypeptide precursors cleaved to form active hormones which are stored in secretory vesicles and released as when the signal is received as shown in the diagram. For example, the human insulin hormone 51 amino acid polypeptide is synthesized within the pancreatic cells, beta cells, from larger polypeptide precursor. Preproinsulin, a polypeptide with 86 amino acids, as we can see from the diagram, translation of preproinsulin occurs in the cytosol followed by the translation of translated preproinsulin across the endoplasmic reticulum membrane into the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum where the signal peptide is cleaved and folding of the proinsulin occurs. Proinsulin is then exported from the endoplasmic reticulum through transport vesicles to Golgi apparatus. From Golgi apparatus through secretory vesicles, the proinsulin are exocytosed into circulation on receiving signals. Inside the secretory vesicles, proinsulin is cleaved to active hormone insulin and C peptide. Similarly, the parathyroid hormone, which is a polypeptide with 84 amino acids, synthesized from a larger polypeptide, pre-pro parathyroid hormone, 
having 115 amino acids. The majority of the hormones fall within this class of hormones. Some of the common examples are thyrotropin releasing hormone, parathyroid hormone, angiotensins, antidiuretic hormone, growth hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, oxytocin, prolactin, insulin like growth factor 1 hormone. Amino acid hormones Amino acid hormones are those that are synthesized by decarboxylating and modifying certain amino acids as shown in the diagram. An example of the catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine are synthesized by modifying the amino acid tyrosine. Others like histamine is synthesized from the amino acid histidine and serotonin as well as melatonin are derived from amino acid tryptophan. They could be either hydrophilic that is water soluble like peptide hormones or hydrophobic like steroid hormones. They bind to carrier proteins to prevent from being filtered out by the kidney. The most common amino acid precursors are tyrosine and tryptophan. Their chemical name generally ends in INE. Here this table shows few of the hormones with uh, their parent amino acid. Fatty acid hormones. Fatty acid hormones are derived from polyunsaturated fatty acids. For example, eicosanoid hormones are produced by the oxidation of 20 carbon fatty acids such as arachidonic acid as shown in the diagram. Fatty acid hormones are biologically active lipids and paracrine in nature with a very short half-life of few seconds. They are released from nearly all cell membranes. It includes the principal hormone groups, prostaglandins, prostacyclines, thromboxanes, and leukotrienes. Prostaglandins are a group of structurally different lipid compounds accounting for multiple activities ranging from constriction or dilation of smooth muscle cells contraction of uterus during parturition, regulation of inflammation, regulation of cell growth, etc. Prostacyclines and thromboxanes are both derivatives of prostaglandins. Prostacyclines act as local vasodilators and prevent blood platelet aggregation. Contrarily, thromboxanes are vasoconstrictors and promote platelet aggregation. Leukotrienes on the other hand are signaling chemicals that mediate inflammation and some allergic reactions. Now moving on to steroid hormones. Steroid hormones are derived from cholesterol and are structurally all similar. Here is a diagram showing some pathways of steroidogenesis. Once secreted they bind to plasma proteins as they cannot easily diffuse in the blood due to their hydrophobic nature. They have a, large, they have a longer half-life than that of the peptide or amino acid hormones. They can easily move across the lipid bilayered plasma membrane as they are lipophilic hormones. The attachment of different chemical groups to the core four ring structure allows for a large diversity of functions. The major classes of steroid hormones are glucocorticoids having 21 carbons, example cortisol cortisone, mineralocorticoids having 21 carbons, example aldosterone, progestogens having 21 carbons, example progesterone, androgens having 19 carbons, Example, testosterone, dihydrotestosterone. Estrogens having 18 carbons. 
example estrone, estradiol, estriol. Glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids are both synthesized from adrenal cortex. Glucocorticoids are major, majorly concerned with anti-inflammatory activities while mineralocorticoids play a crucial role in salt water balance. Progestogens are produced by corpus luteum in the ovary and the placenta to maintain pregnancy. Androgens taken from Greek word which means male and estrogens taken from the Greek word oistros which means inspiration, gen which means producer of are sex hormones produced by the male and female reproductive organs. Androgens are concerned with the development of primary and secondary male sexual characters while estrogens are concerned with female characters. Types of hormones on the basis of their solubility in aqueous medium. They are hydrophilic hormones and hydrophobic hormones. Hydrophilic hormones or lipophobic hormones are water soluble hormones like peptide and some amino acid derived hormones. They circulate freely in the blood, however are repelled by lipids, hence they cannot move across the cell membrane. They have receptors on the cell membrane as shown in the figure. The peptide hormones come under the category of these hormones. Hydrophobic hormones. Hydrophobic hormones or lipophilic hormones are lipid soluble hormones and hence less soluble in the blood. They need hydrophilic carrier proteins to reach their target sites. They can easily move across the lipid bilayered cell membrane as they are lipophilic and their receptors are located within the cytoplasm across the cell plasma membrane of the target cell as shown in the diagram. The hormones detach from the carrier proteins before entering the cell. Examples are steroid hormones, thyroid hormones, etc. Triidothyronine and tetraidothyronine are two major thyroid hormones which are synthesized by attaching iodine to the amino acid tyrosine. The solubility in lipids of these hormones comes from the benzene ring of the amino acid tyrosine as well as the attached iodine molecules. Now moving on to the trophic hormones, tropic hormones and non-tropic hormones. Trophic hormones, trophic taken from the Greek word which means nourishment. These trophic hormones activate growth of tissues and organs. Examples are the thyroid stimulating hormones and adrenocorticotropic hormones. These hormones cause increase in number and size of cells in the thyroid and adrenal gland respectively. Excess of thyroid stimulating hormone can lead to goiter. Tropic hormones. Tropic from the Greek word which means change. Tropic hormones are produced by one endocrine gland and target another endocrine gland rather than the target cells as shown in the diagram. For example, gonadotropin releasing hormone is a tropic hormone produced by the hypothalamus and targets another endocrine gland, the anterior pituitary gland. Similarly, the tropic hormones, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone produced by the anterior pituitary gland targets another endocrine gland, the gonads that will produce gametes and steroid sex hormones. Non-tropic hormones, non-tropic hormones act on the target cells directly rather than act on another endocrine gland as in the tropic hormones as shown in the diagram. 
glucocorticoid signaling to show tropic and now moving on to non-tropic hormones. Non-tropic hormones act on the target cells directly rather than act on another endocrine gland as in the tropic hormones as shown in the diagram. Glucocorticoids released into the bloodstream from the adrenal cortex change the glucose levels in the blood. Antidiuretic hormone released from the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland regulates the kidneys in body water balance. Now um, coming to the summary part, hormones are chemical messengers produced by the endocrine glands and cells. Once secreted, they are released into the blood or body fluids to reach their target site or target cell. The hormones can be classified on several bases. The various types of hormones based on different parameters are as follows. Types of hormones on the basis of the distance between the site of production and the site of action which are endocrine hormones that act on distantly located target cells, paracrine hormones that act on adjacent cells, autocrine hormones that act on the same type of cell or the cell that produces them. Types of hormones on the basis of the chemical nature are peptide or protein hormones, hormones derived from large polypeptide, amino acid hormones, hormones derived from amino acids, fatty acid hormones, hormones derived from polyunsaturated fatty acids, steroid hormones, hormones derived from cholesterol. Types of hormones on the basis of their solubility in aqueous medium are hydrophilic hormones which are water soluble hormones, hydrophobic hormones which are lipid soluble hormones, trophic hormones, tropic hormones and non-tropic hormones. Trophic hormones stimulate growth of tissues or organs, tropic hormones are produced by one endocrine gland and target another endocrine gland rather than the target cells. Non-tropic hormones act on the target cells directly rather than act on another endocrine gland as in the tropic hormones. All these hormones of the endocrine signaling system along with the neurohormones and neurotransmitters of the nervous system regulate and coordinate the activities of the trillions of cells that make up the body of a multicellular animal. All these hormones of the endocrine signaling system along with the neurohormones and neurotransmitters of the nervous system regulate and coordinate the activities of the trillions of cells that make up the body of a multicellular organism. Thank you.